Growing the economy is the priority of the people of our province. I am convinced of it because I'm very privileged to have the opportunity to listen to New Brunswickers from all corners of our province. And I hear how they want us to focus on economic growth. Of course, we also understand the importance of growing the economy so we can, employ, so we can invest in important uh, services for the people of our province. It's by growing the economy that we're going to be able to invest more in education to help our children get the best start in life. It's by in investing and growing our economy that we're going to be able to ensure we have good, strong health care delivery. And of course, I hear it all the time, uh, and I can tell you that it resonates with all of us, that we have to work hard to grow the economy so our young people can stay here. So through our multi-year economic growth plan, we are investing to create jobs and economic growth. Our growth plan focuses on five pillars, giving businesses the capital they need to invest and grow, being as agile as possible as a government and as an ecosystem here in the province that support entrepreneurs and businesses, invest in our infrastructure to stimulate the economy, create jobs, and help our businesses be able to get their services and products to markets around the world, invest in new ideas and innovations so we're at the forefront of opportunities to grow the economy, and of course, investing in our people, making sure we have the absolute best workforce possible to offer the businesses and industries of our province. We also, through our multi-year economic growth plan, have identified growth opportunities, very specific growth opportunities that we've been working on as a government. And of course, all of the government of New Brunswick, all the departments have a role to play in ensuring economic growth. And as well, we have our Economic Development Agency of Opportunities New Brunswick that's working very hard to bring opportunities to the communities of our province. And I'd like to tell you that Opportunities New Brunswick is working on over 100 additional jobs for Fredericton in artificial intelligence, cybersecurity, computer system design, smart grid, and data processing that we hope will come to fruition. Now, if you take just a minute and think back to that period in time when I gave you that speech in 2014, here's what you might remember. From 2011 to 2014, the New Brunswick economy shrank. I want to repeat that. From 2011 to 2014, the New Brunswick economy shrank. The only province of the 10 provinces of our country during that time period that saw its economy shrink. The New Brunswick economy retracted by 1% during those four years. Fast forward to today, and you'll see a much different picture. Policies enacted by this government have helped economic activity across the province by working with you and the business community since 2015 Several economic indicators in the province have shown improvement. Our GDP has grown every single year. In 2015, the New Brunswick economy grew at the third fastest rate of all the provinces in Canada. Ontario and British Columbia were number one and two. Little New Brunswick was number three in 2015 when it came to growing our economy. 2016, off of a good year of growth, we grew yet again just below the Canadian average rate. In 2017, off of two years of growth, we grew yet again, and Statistics Canada just confirmed that it was at a rate of 1.9%. And in 2018, we're projected to grow yet again. Our unemployment rate was, again, in 2014, around 10%. We now find ourselves at 7.3%. And for over 20 consecutive months, we've had an unemployment rate that has been below 10%, normally hovering at about 10%, uh, about 8%. We're also proud that since we've been your government, we've been able to reduce the provincial budget's deficit by more than half, all the while investing 15.9% more in education and 9.8% more in healthcare. So let me address each of the pillars outlined in this document. First, private sector driven economy. We understand that our government must play a role to ensure businesses can start up and thrive here in New Brunswick, which is why we are creating the conditions for a private sector driven economy. We understand the importance of small businesses for a private sector driven economy. Importance of small businesses is also demonstrated in the fact that approximately 90% of businesses in our province have 50 employees or less. So we chose as your government to increase the small business investor tax credit for individual investors from 30% to 50%, allowing small businesses to get the capital that they need to be able to invest, innovate, be more productive, add value, hire more people, and compete. And for the fourth time since January 1st, 2015, we lowered the New Brunswick Small Business Corporate Income Tax Rate to 2.5%. It was at 4.5% when we started as your government. We're investing $30 million this year in Fredericton area roads and street improvements. Great example of that is the Two Nations Crossing. 
We're investing in projects like the $18 million expansion of the Fredericton International Airport. And in fact, of course, as I think all of you would know, an expanded Fredericton International Airport was one of the Fredericton Chamber's top advocacy priorities. We are investing $76 million in the new Centennial Building. We're investing in our schools and hospitals in the Fredericton region, like a $14 million renovation to Fredericton High, $27 million to renovate and upgrade Oromocto High. Uh, we are also investing a, in a $200 million expansion of the Dr. Everett Chalmers Hospital. And it's certainly not just the public sector that's creating jobs through infrastructure projects. Together with the private sector, Investment in major, co major capital projects, a key indicator of economic optimism, has grown by 54% since this government took office. The investment grew by 18% in 2017 alone. We're very pleased to have an international firm like IBM create many jobs in cybersecurity here in the region. Just last month, we announced that multinational technology company Siemens has chosen to establish a cybersecurity center in Fredericton. The Canada Centre for Cyber Security, to be housed at Knowledge Park, is also helping us not only uh, maintain and grow jobs from IBM, but bring others, like Siemens, and bring their expertise in critical infrastructure protection to New Brunswick's emerging cybersecurity ecosystem. And we announced that after considering multiple jurisdictions, Canadian Nuclear Laboratory selected New Brunswick to establish its National Innovation Centre. In accordance with the New Brunswick Innovation Agenda, your government is investing over $50 million to foster innovation and boost research and development in New Brunswick this fiscal year. Digital New Brunswick is a five-year plan aimed at increasing government transparency and accountability. It contains initiatives to help manage the province's challenges, such as an aging population, while embracing new digital technologies for effective and efficient delivery of services. The strategy aims to improve government service delivery across several departments. Number two, re responsible resource development. We are developing our natural resources in a responsible manner. We supported the Energies Pipeline, Trevelli Mine, and continue to support the Sisson Mine project. We also support a potential $1 billion iron production facility in Beldoon. This project would bring over a billion dollars of investments and create about 1,000 construction jobs to build the iron production facility. Once complete, the iron production facility would create approximately 200 permanent jobs. We continue to support industries like forestry. Just yesterday, we announced funding for the purchase of a mechanized forestry equipment simulator at NBCC Miramichi. With this investment, New Brunswick will be the only province east of Quebec offering this type of program and the only English-speaking program of this type in Canada. We're supporting agriculture and many bi-local programs. We're supporting our blueberries industry because we're poised to be the largest producer of wild blueberries in the world. And we do see opportunities in cannabis. But I want to be very clear, this is a major policy shift for our country, and we recognize that there will be ups and downs. We recognize that there's an economic opportunity. Cannabis will be produced somewhere in this country, and we believe have we, have, we have a cost competitive jurisdiction here in New Brunswick that will be able to help us create jobs and bring some of the capital investment that will come with the legalization of cannabis by the federal government. Improved export performance. Well, this is very crucial, and I couldn't agree more that this should be on the list. We are an export-oriented economy. In fact, some statistics would show that we're the most export-oriented economy of all the provinces in Canada. Now, I think any country, jurisdiction in the world would be very happy to have that type of economic relationship with such a powerhouse, but we should recognize, like a small business, if you have one customer that represents 90% of your business, it might be the time to diversify. We have worked hard to support the comprehensive economic trade agreement between Canada and the European Union for this very reason. We support the CPTPP, and we have been consistently putting out uh, trade missions with the private sector to be able to open up new markets around the world. Of course, we're also going to do everything we can to improve and strengthen relations with the US so we can still get our products and services into, those mar into that market. We introduced what's called the Capital Investment Enhancement Policy to help export-oriented small businesses make some of the capital investments required to compete in markets outside of the province and, of course, to maintain their customers. Number four, labor development, labor force development. With an aging population, we have fiscal pressures that are put onto our healthcare system and to senior care. 
And we also have pressures that are put on to our labor force. And we recognize that, and again, uh, we, we're pleased to see it on the list of the group. With an aging populations, we have, with an aging population, we have heard from New Brunswickers all over that there is a challenge now, pretty much in every region, when it comes to getting labor. So we have work to do to do everything we can to ensure our businesses can get the labor that they need, to have a skilled workforce so that they can continue to compete and get their products and services into markets all across the globe. We also need to invest in education. Education is key. It is the best economic investment we can make, and it is by far the best social equalizer out there. And that's why we're the government that has invested the most in education in the history of our province. We're not just investing more, we're investing strategically. And last but not least, we're investing to right a wrong that we saw a few decades ago in New Brunswick. We're investing to put trades back in our schools, giving our children the opportunity to learn these important skills. We're also investing in childcare. We're creating more childcare spaces to increase accessibility. And our childcare program also has, for those that need the most support, free childcare so that the parents can go to pursue their studies or can get into the workforce. We got rid of the parental and spousal contribution to make post-secondary education more accessible and affordable. We created a tuition relief for the middle class program, giving financial support up front to students. And for those that need the most support, the free tuition program. To put in context the magnitude of this program, over 6,000 New Brunswickers went to a New Brunswick college or a New Brunswick university this past year for free. And number five, fiscal responsibility. We are proud that we worked hard with the support from New Brunswickers and have reduced our budget deficit by more than half, all the while growing the economy year after year and investing record amounts in education and healthcare. We will not be the government that cuts into education and healthcare to balance the books which is why we have a balanced approach to get to a budget surplus. But with all that said, there's still lots to do. We need to work together to keep moving New Brunswick forward. We need your help. We need to continue to grow the economy in a way that works for all New Brunswickers. So we have a few things that we ask of the business community. We have our own document, if you will. First, to keep moving New Brunswick forward, we need to address income inequality together. That's why we're investing even more in it. We want to invest even more in education and training moving forward to give more people the opportunity to benefit from a growing economy. That's why, yes indeed, increasing wages is important. We must also create equitable opportunities for our workers. We are very pleased to raise the minimum wage four times since we've been the government and we have indexed it, which means that there will be more increases coming. We have moved on pay equity, but there's still lots of work to be done. We need to grow our economy in a way that we recognize that we have to include First Nation communities. We have to consult with them, not just because it's the right thing to do, because legally we are obliged to do it, according to the Supreme Court of Canada. And of course, we want to include them so that they can share in the prosperity that we are creating together. We want to grow our economy in a way that we're inclusive of people living with a disability. So I implore all of you to do what you can on these, on these things to ensure that we are hiring more people living with a disability, that we're looking at the wages of our, of our people and workers, that we are confident that it's the right thing to do moving forward to enhance the CPP, that we advance pay equity within our businesses and organizations, and last but not least, that we do everything we can to hire more young people. Second, to keep moving New Brunswick forward, we need to fight climate change together. We recognize that climate change is the largest challenge facing humanity. It's one of the largest challenges any generation on our planet has had to face. So here in New Brunswick, we need to play our role to combat climate change. And if we think that climate change is somebody else's problem, we just have to look at the fact. In the last year and a half, we have the largest ice storm ever recorded in the history of our province and the largest flood ever recorded in the history of our province. So that's why we have put forward over 100 action items to fight climate change. We're going to be asking large emitters to pay their fair share, but we've done it in a way that we no longer ask anything of the consumers. And the reason for that is we did in increase the gas tax a few years ago. We have one of the highest gas taxes in the country, so we believe that we have played our part But we'll, we'll, when it comes to that. But what we will do is increasingly year over year have more, uh, more of the revenue garnished by the gas tax go to climate change initiatives such as energy efficiency programs. Third, 
To keep moving New Brunswick forward, we need to advance women's equality together. Women's equality is important for the economic success of our province, and it's also important to our social fabric. We have worked very hard to appoint more women to positions of influence. Indeed, during our mandate, we have appointed uh, uh, women to the provincial court to the point that we are the first province in the country to have gender parity on the provincial court. Fourth, health care. To keep moving New Brunswick forward, we must work together to address the wait times to our health care system. So, we need your help. We need your help in the public dialogue of the importance of investing strategically in health care. We also need your help, many of the innovators in this room, of how we can be innovative and do a better job of delivering health care and senior care in this province. And we have a very innovative program that we're very proud of, which is called Living St. John. Uh, and it's, it's proper to St. John, so I hope people in this room will understand why we did that. They have, unfortunately, uh, very high levels of generational poverty in the core of St. John, and it needs to be addressed. But what's interesting about this investment, $10 million over five years, it's going to be community-led. Our government recognizes that there are people uh, on the front lines that, are, that have been working at this for years that know what needs to happen to end generational poverty in St. John. So what's interesting is not only do we think it will have a huge impact on the poverty rates in St. John, it will help us as a province be able to identify the most innovative ways in delivering poverty reduction initiatives. Very similarly, we're doing everything we can to improve senior care. By working together with New Brunswickers and you, the private sector, we have a plan that's working. There's no doubt, however, that there's still lots of work to be done. There are still challenges to overcome, and there are still opportunities to seize. Merci beaucoup. Questions? New Brunswick realtors in the province are concerned with the unfair way that the land transfer tax is applied. It's based on the selling price or the assessed value, but realtors believe it should be based on the reality of the selling price. Sorry, can you just clarify something? Because you say it's either the, the assessed value or the sale of the home, but then you said that you want it to better reflect the sale of the home, so I just don't know, I don't understand that discrepancy there. Well, it's currently based on either the sale price or the assessed value, whichever one of those is greater. But we believe it should be based on the actual sale price. I am sure during the campaign that that will be debated and discussed as well. Uh, and we'll be putting forward uh, ideas on how we can ensure that we are uh, indeed putting policies and investments forward like our tax system to ensure that it is uh, helping us spur economic growth in a way that works for all New Brunswickers. Uh, I would assume, uh, I, I haven't just spoken directly to the, the Department of Finance about this, I would assume that it would, uh, certainly the findings will be made public and I'm sure that it will help uh, fuel a great discussion about what's the pathway forward. My question revolves around the recent Auditor General reports with respect to the province's finance, finances. And I'd like maybe for you to outline the government's rationale or decision around delaying the, uh, the, the delivery of balanced budgets? Uh, so we've chosen growth. We've chosen a path where over a six-year period, when we were debating in 2014 about the finance, a six-year period, we would uh, balance the books. Uh, obviously, a six-year period means uh, into the second mandate, if we're so uh, privileged and lucky enough to have the Conference of New Brunswickers yet again. Uh, we decided to delay by one year. And one of the main reasons for that, there were a few, but one of the main reasons for that is certainly with the uncertainty of trade with the U.S. Of course, sexual violence is, is a problem that affects everyone in society, but there is some research to suggest that it is extremely prominent um, on post-secondary campuses specifically. And we find this from um, Statistics Canada's general social survey, where 47% of um, sexual assaults that were reported were from the demographic of 15 to 24, and 41% of those in that demographic did come from students. And so all that to say, my question to you is, is should your government gain a second mandate? Um, what, is, what, are you, what are your next steps to ensure that New Brunswick post-secondary students aren't part of that 41%, and to ensure that our post-secondary institutions do remain truly accessible? The goal would certainly be to uh, be able to have the universities and colleges have these types of policies be standardized. 
Um, and, and we very much appreciated the advocacy that your group had, had done, and I would certainly be pleased to facilitate this, to have a meeting with post-secondary education training and labor to discuss uh, maybe the best ways forward, because uh, we were all certainly very keen to support uh, the idea of legislation, but they certainly made some points that they thought, uh, at least for the time being, uh, having the wording that was changed was the right approach. Uh, and last but not least, I do want to say that on that overall uh, topic, I mean, we've introduced the Intimate Partner Violence Intervention Act, which I think is, is legislation that's going to make a real difference. Um, that, of course, is unfortunately uh, an investment that we're making to help those that are in the situation. So we want to do more to make, to, to not have people be in that situation. Uh, we're also very pleased to have in increased uh, just recently the budget for transition houses by 11% as well, which we think will help uh, unfortunately, many people will help many people that are in that unfortunate situation. We'll be meeting with you very soon to talk about the need for further investment in health care. We know that we need more family doctors when we pull New Brunswickers. That's their number one health care priority, more family doctors. We also need more specialists. You pointed out the need to address the wait times we have in New Brunswick. We'll be calling on all parties to commit to hiring all vacant positions for specialists in New Brunswick. There are 66 vacant specialist jobs in New Brunswick for doctors, and we want to engage a private sector recruiter to go out and fill those jobs immediately. So uh, we're hoping that either today or in the future, in your platform, you'll make those sorts of commitments for our healthcare system. Um, so certainly, we have a bit of a of, of a of a of a multifaceted approach where you you we need more family doctors, we need more specialists. And uh, Anthony, I was pleased to make that announcement with you where we're hiring 50 uh, more family doctors and specialists together. Um, we're also very cognizant of the fact that we also need to try to alleviate pressures of our healthcare system. And, uh, and also, I, I, it will be a reminder uh, to me to ask you, Anthony, uh, people like you, Anthony, that represent organizations and the private sector to really urge you to look into this aging pilot program that we have. I think for it to be successful, we have to have projects that are uh, community-based, but we have private sector NGOs, uh, experts, organizations working together to make them a success. So I'm wondering how American-style political attacks fit into a new approach to politics and government. Well, Hamish, you may be very surprised. I don't agree with you. Um, the, the, uh, the idea of doing contrast ads, I think, is important and uh, is one that is, is an important discussion to have within uh, our province and uh, for the upcoming campaign. Uh, we will never attack somebody personally. We will never attack somebody uh, based on uh, any type of personal uh, characteristics. But we're going to attack people's records. We're going to talk about how somebody's record doesn't match our record. Uh, but I can vow to you today that we will not attack anybody personally. We will not attack anybody's personal characteristics. We will not attack their families. None of that uh, will happen. Uh, during your discussion, you mentioned training for the communities or done by the community in St. John. One of the biggest challenges we have is hiring staff and keeping that staff at our contact center, especially bilingual staff. Wondering if you can speak a little bit more about what kind of training we can expect and uh, whether, whether language training is going to be part of that. The business services centers, uh, contact centers as they're often called, represent about 18,000 jobs in our province, uh, over a billion dollars of exports come into the province because of this important industry. Uh, there are very in interesting personal growth opportunities within the industry. Uh, they do interesting work and certainly that stigma is something that we're working hard to try to rectify and we hope by addressing that stigma that will help a little bit with some of the labor challenges that some of you may be facing. Uh, also, we believe that it's important to have a trained workforce for that sector and many others. And uh, last but not least, when it comes to uh, the bilingual aspect, we do actually have a program that will allow somebody that is unemployed to be able to learn a second language uh, for free. Thank you very much, everyone. Merci beaucoup pour votre temps.